Welcome to Scotland. Uh, my name is Dan Gacho. I'm a music producer, writer, and this is First Cut Music. Um, this is an old church. Uh, it was built in 1843, um, and we've converted it into a recording facility, essentially. And uh, this is where the grannies would have had their cups of tea back in the day. I think it was a youth club. Um, and I'll take you through, show you a bit of the building. This is the main hall we're going into now. This is where the vicar would have uh, done his talks and the pews are all there and um, everything's now gone. It's been removed. So we've built a mix room essentially in this, in this part here, um, big isolation shell wall there. And uh, we've also got a B room because we'll go, we'll go into this bit in a second. Um, I'll show you a bit further around. So we've got a B room here, which is essentially a programming room. Um, this is a flexible space outside here that we've got tie lines to um, and we can track drums and whatnot and uh, yeah it's, it's come together pretty well I think. So come through to this bit, we've got a small office through here, switch your light on so you can see it. Empty as nothing's in here at the moment as you can see, but that's where we are. This is the original front door and in here we have a programming room. Hey Lewis, we're just doing our video tour. How are you getting on? Yeah, not good. Just watching That's pretty good. This is Lewis, our intern. He's working well in our in our room here. We've got ties from this room into the breakout space there as well, which just makes it super flexible. Uh, allows us to connect to all the rooms basically, um, which is pretty good. And that essentially is this room. Uh, I'll take you into the studio now so you can have a look around. Um, the main mix room. So this is the main mix room, sort of tracking room. It was designed by Chris Walls and he is a genius. Um, we've basically got a situation here where we're in the center of an old church, obviously. So this is a uh, uh, isolation shell wall that's seven meters high. Um, this is basically decoupling uh, from the room in here. So it's a completely floated room. Um, it sits on dwarf walls and stud flex pads. Um, it has uh, eczema doors, which are acoustic doors and it has a fully floating floor essentially and uh, it is the best control room I've ever worked in um, and uh, it's, it's quite gobsmacking actually so um, yeah I'll take you in and make a look so this is the room um, when we sat down with Chris um, I wanted to make sure that this was a room that was comfortable to work in wasn't too sterile I know that when you put fabric on walls it can often be quite uh, almost like a surgical uh, room you know it, it's not it's a bit too sterile for me so I wanted a place that was much like a workshop somewhere that you can put a cup of tea down and not feel like you're um, you know in a sterile environment so we got shelves put in the front which at first I didn't think was a possible thing but acoustically has turned out amazing um, the room is really flat and the monitoring is amazing and uh, yeah it's, it's it's turned out great so um, yeah it, it's, it's always nice when things pay off like that so yeah we've got the SSL as the main heart of the room um, we've got the outboard all accessible to the sides um, I've got all my pedals everything on the shelves everything that I use day to day is in is in my eye line so that's all very helpful um, we've got a good synth collection here I love Moogs for the bass lines and different things the filters are amazing um, we've got virus there which is great for what everything else um, we've got the uh, software stuff as well, so like the complete control, the native instrument stuff, which is, allows so much flexibility and speed within the box. Um, we've got, what else have we got? Loads of guitar pedals, probably over a hundred in, in, in the building uh, throughout, but basically everything's in my eye line really. We've got Big Sky, all the usual suspects, Big Muff, loads of electro harmonics, almost all of the electro harmonics range. Um, uh, and that probably leads me on to guitars. We've got a good collection here so a load of old martins i've got a couple of old gibsons as well and just different tones and different um flavors for whatever whatever you're working on because we do a lot of tv and film music um, and production music within that space um it's something different every day so we can be doing a 60s uh, style album or we could be doing um a really modern indie project um so we need to be able to cover every bass and every flavor um we've got a few different amps which we can amp to 
Uh, we reamp a lot through there and also to the, the breakout space. Um, and we've got a good mic collection to be able to capture it the best we can. Um, and essentially that is the kit that's in here. I can probably break down a bit of the outboard. On the left, again, usual suspects for most decent studios. So we've got uh, the API 3124, uh, which is a great pre. I use that loads for guitars and synths. Um, and it's really forward sounding, as, it, as, it, as you know. Um, you've got the distressors there, which are on drum bus at the moment. You've got the tube, the warm audio tube EQs, which are really nice, which is the EQP 1A, basically. Um, I've got a couple of Neve 1073s, which we use for vocals and bass all the time. Um, you've got Procasti Reverb, which is amazing as well. Plates on there are just amazing tails. Um, we've got the Kemper, which we use loads for guitar tracking now. So the Kemper is amazing. Um, uh, often that is used in place of amps now, it's just such a good uh, thing. Uh, another Neve 1073 stereo unit. We've got a 710 uh, Universal Audio, which is just nice pre, which is like the 610, but you've got that dial in the middle that allows you to have tube and solid state. Um, we've got an old LA-2A, which is nice. We've got a retro stay level, which is even nicer than the nice thing. You've got um, uh, a couple of Chandler bits there. So you've got the, on the stereo bus I use the uh, EMI um, curve bender, which is just amazing for a top end. Um, you've got Manly and API compressors there. Often, uh, just it, on slower tracks, I often find I use the Manly loads. Um, the TG channel's really nice as well. Um, you've got the TubeTech CL1B, which is a, just the go-to tracking compressor for anything really. Vocals is just, it just sits in its place and it makes it so much easier to mix when it's gone through that thing. Um, I usually use it on fixed because that's just amazing. Anyway, uh, 1176, which is often just in smash mode. Um, I don't use it for anything else. I find that compressors in the box at the moment, um, if you push them too hard, you kind of notice it a bit more. When you're out of the box, it just gives you what you remember. So um, it's all good. And we're on Apogee conversion here, the new uh, Symphony system. So I've got 48 IO there for the, with the SSL, which is 48 channels as well. And we are firmly out of the box. So um, yeah, that's where we are. And that's kind of the setup. Um, it's not a commercial facility, it's kind of just my uh, room that I work in with loads of different composers and different writers. Um, so it allows us just to have the flexibility and have it, have it for ourselves really. Um, and yeah, I feel very lucky to be in this, in this situation right now.